match is yet another VTC match that I had from the International Challenge. We can see I'm using Pyroar, Gengar, Aromatis this time, and Gudra. And uh, my opponent brought some pretty standard Pokemon. Uh, Scar Salamence is seen a lot. Of course, probably a Banded Talid Flame, Leftovers, Eve Slash, and a Rotom Wash, all definitely within the top 10 usage Pokemon of VGC play. Now here we really get to see my uh, Mega Gengar set showcase itself nicely. I added a lot of HP on my Mega Gengar. It has just enough uh, speed to outspeed Mega Lucario at max speed by one point. Most Mega Lucario don't run max speed, so uh, that kind of just allows me to bypass that one threat in exchange for not only a lot more bulk, but much better substitutes. We can see here that I'm actually able to live uh, the Brave Bird coming from Talonflame. I think I capped that at some point. It, it, it is banded if it's doing that much damage. Um, if you do, and if you don't have any HP investment on your Gengar, you definitely die to it. So I'm able to take down its Talonflame, and I did predict a King Shield early on. Uh, Aegislash doesn't really threaten Pyroar. It can hit me with a Sacred Sword, but Aegislash is normally faster than, uh, uh, it's slower than Pyroar. And of course, Shadow Sneak doesn't work on Pyroar. So if it wanted to Shadow Sneak that turn, Shadow Sneak Brave Bird onto Mega Gengar, uh, I just didn't see that happening. He probably thought he would finish me up with, the, with one attack there. Now we can see Stone Edge not really doing anything as I switch into Aromatisse, seeing Salamence come out. I uh, didn't really want to leave Gengar in there to be possibly picked off by a Shadow Sneak. And since, of course, Salamence is Scar for like 90% of them are during VGC play, Stone Edge is going to be a little bit annoying. Uh, it does bring my Pyroar down to 25, not even my Sash, but fortunately I'm able to hit my Fire Blast, take out that Substitute, and I was really hoping that I would live a Flash Cannon from Aegislash. Um, my Aromatisse can live Flash Cannon if it's not like a max special attack variant of Aegislash. Unfortunately, this appears to be that. Granted, I was missing some HP because of the Stone Edge on the previous turn. Uh, so, Aromatisse is actually pretty bulky though. It's able to live quite a few hits, and there I was unable to go for the Moon Blast to hit Salamence. Now, because I did predict that first turn Will O Wisp against the Aegislash, I am able to punish him a little bit for going behind the substitutes. He's now missing a lot of HP, and I've yet to hit him directly. I've broken a substitute one time. I decided to bring in Gudra here instead of, Me instead of Mega Gengar, just because uh, Mega Gengar might be outsped, will probably be outsped by Salomon since I only gave it enough to outspeed Mega Lucario, which is 112 base speed. Uh, um, so I didn't want to put myself in that position. I just wanted to try to get rid of the Scar Salamence, which is why I did not try to predict. I just went straight for Ice Beam, but he brings in Rotom, which is a little bit annoying. Uh, especially because when he brings back in the Salamence, he'll get the Intimidate, which will cut down the power of my Power Whip attack. Now here I'm finally able to hit the Aegislash. I know that once Aegislash gets down below about 75% HP, Pyroar can kill it in one Fire Blast, which is why I use Fire Blast instead of Flamethrower. But I was... this Pyroar, it took so long to breed, but he hits Fire Blast really, really well. Unlike my other Pyroar, uh, Kovu, who utilizes Flamethrower. Now we do see that Power Whip is a clean 2 hit KO outside of the Citrus Berry uh, recovery, but that is very good because Gengar can easily come in and mop th things up right there, or what my opponent decides to do right here, which we'll, we'll be able to decide if this is a good play or not. He decides to go straight and protect with Rotom, which I actually predicted. Uh, because right now Salamence is a much bigger threat. Salamence can KO Gudra much more easily than Rotom can. Uh, he decides to Draco Meteor, 
my Gengar. Now granted, I was just going to double target the Salamence that turn. Gengar went for Sludge Bomb, uh, and my Gudra went for Ice Beam. But if he had hit Gudra with the attack, maybe it would have been a little bit easier for him to stall out um, my Gudra with his Rotom if he was going to burn me and then go for Protect and all that, all those shenanigans. But then again, on the following turn, he would have had to deal with Gengar and Gudra as opposed to just Gudra. So, I guess it's, it may be neither here nor there. That Power Whip really doesn't do anything after the burn and minus one, but that's okay because we have wonderful neutral attacks like Dragon Pulse, which is why I carry that as well. Uh, I really struggled with the moves at there, whether to run Thunderbolt, f Ice Beam, Flamethrower, and or Fire Blast, uh, or, of course, Dragon Pulse, and even Dragon Tail. Gudra definitely has that four-slot syndrome going on. It can use so many useful moves. But I really settled on Flamethrower, Ice Beam, Dragon Pulse, and Power Whip, because I didn't need to use Fire Blast. Power was using that. But I did want Fire elsewhere on my team, and uh, it was the only Pokemon that could use fire, grass, and ice attacks usefully in that manner, so definitely wanted to have all those present, all those options present, and resisting water and grass means it's a great check to Rotom, so it definitely makes sense to bring it in with Sap Sipper on grass type moves and grass type Pokemon, and then we can have the fire type moves as well, uh, so yeah, I, I, it does all made sense to me, but that match was pretty fun, I hope you all enjoyed it, and I hope you guys like a little bit of a change of pace here with the Saturday upload. Make sure you hit that like button if you enjoyed the battle video. That way I know that you guys are watching and enjoying. You all have a great day. Alright, bye-bye now.